Hi there, it's Daniel. It's time on a short investing guide to start talking about how to buy stocks, what we're doing when we buy stocks. For that, I've developed a series of topics that's going to cover it. So have a look. As you can see, most of those have to do with finding a stock, analyzing it, understanding the company, and then the actual mechanics of buying, along with some examples from my investing or from other people's investing. But before we get into that, there are two topics that we need to cover first to understand what it means to buy a stock. The details of what it means to buy a stock and also who we are as investors and what that means for how we should think about stocks. What is a stock? When a company needs to raise money, they have two options. They can either borrow money, which is debt, or they can sell a piece of their business, which is equity. If they go the debt route, the advantage is they're not giving away any ownership of their business. So if they pay off the debt and pay off the interest that they owe, and at some point they are making more money, they get to keep all of that money. They don't have to pay the lenders that money. If they don't pay back their debt, however, they will then have to go give up some piece of their business to pay off the debt, whether they have to sell off something or they have to actually give away ownership. So debt can be riskier in its way. Equity means selling a piece of the business. You sell your parents 25% of your startup business to get it running, for example. That's the startup level, the small business level. But on the stock market, a company is selling a piece of their business through an initial public offering or whatever. Stocks, equity, interchangeable, mean the same thing. So a stock is ownership of the business. Shares are the units of the stock. So there are millions of shares in a given company. When you buy shares, you own a piece of the stock, which has a right to the profits of the business. That's the way to technical way to think about it. For example, in the portfolios I manage, I own shares in Progressive Corporation, a leading car insurance company in the US. Think of Flow from all of the commercials. You know Flow. What does owning shares of a stock give me? When I own shares of a stock, I own a piece of the business. I'm an actual owner of the business. So in the case of Progressive, I own a tiny piece of their business. I can't go marching into the Progressive boardroom to tell them, hey guys, it's time to change our strategy on X or Y, or could we please just stop advertising flow everywhere? It's not really my place with any amount of ownership, but really you need a large amount to get on the board. But it gives me a right to the future earnings of the company. Again, not in a way where I can literally go and ask for my earnings, but the most typical ways the company returns earnings to shareholders are through dividends or share buybacks. In the case of share buyback, the company is going into the market and buying shares back. So if I wanna sell and get out, I can, and that helps to support the share price. But also when they pay a dividend, with my shares, I receive the same dividend as everybody else who owns shares in the company on a per share basis. So they have to pay me the same dividend that they pay the CEO and the directors on the board and the pension funds who own shares of Progressive and the hedge funds who own shares of Progressive. We all get the same treatment. So we all get the same dividend. I, as I own shares, I also get a share of future earnings and the price of the shares will go in line with what the market expects those future earnings to be. So I don't have to just sit here waiting for the dividends to come or for the company to buy my shares. I can expect that the share price will go in line with the company's earnings, which leads us to the next question. Why do you buy stocks? The most literal reason to buy stocks is because we think that they'll go up, that the price will go higher. That is the point of buying stocks. One caveat, there is a style of investing called dividend investing where you do invest just to receive the dividends from the companies. We'll talk about this style, it's a valid style, it's not exactly what I do, but I just wanna bookmark it now because it is legitimate to bring up. Why would the price go higher? Well, I've just said that as earnings grow over time or as expectations of earnings grow over time, the share price will follow them. And as earnings go lower, 
or as the expectation of earnings go lower, the share price will always fo also follow that. Those are the fundamentals. The fundamentals of the business are its prospects to make money over time. There are a number of ways to define earnings. We'll deal with that at a later point, but that's the fundamental basis. And yet at the same time, in the short term, the very fact that we're trying to figure out how much money the company is going to make over the long term causes sentiment to swing wildly. The market will vote in favor of where they think the earnings will go on a daily basis. The market is always trading. And so you can see the share price fluctuate much more than the earnings themselves will. Benjamin Graham, the founder of Modern Value Investing and one of Warren Buffett's mentors, famously was said to have said, I've never been able to attribute this quote directly, that in the short term, the market is a voting machine. And in the long term, the market is a weighing machine, which again, in the short term, it is voting what it thinks will happen to the shares or to the company's fundamental business. And in the long term, it weighs the earnings and that determines what the share price will be. This isn't literally how it plays out, but in general, the fundamentals do bear out in 95 to 99% of the cases I've seen on the market in my decade plus of observing it. One other brief explainer. I will use the term the market. The market is just a way to refer to the millions and even billions of people out there who are making decisions that I don't know, but that I can see in the newspaper or online every day based on the share prices. We don't need to think too much about their behavior. We'll study it later. Benjamin Graham, who I've mentioned, had a term called Mr. Market, which is a useful shorthand. For now, just know that the market means all those people out there, all their algorithmic trading programs, everything out there that is causing stocks to trade on a daily basis. We don't need to get more detailed, but just know that it's not such an abstract or a foreign thing. There are two important things that you need to know that may be occurring to you now and that I want to clear up, common misconceptions. First, price does not equal value. There's a difference between price and value. Price is a fact of the market. Price is just what something is on sale for. So every day you see different prices and price can have different meanings. Price can be the share price. That's what you most commonly see. That's what you're buying. Price can be the market capitalization, which is basically the price times all the shares available in the company, which gives you the full equity or stock value. And then you can also talk about the enterprise value, which takes the market capitalization and adds in or subtracts any debt or cash the company has to give you sort of a what it's worth right now if somebody just had to literally pay for it at the current price and take it off the market. Those are different types of price, but none of those necessarily are value. Value is subjective. Value is what the company is worth or should be worth. It's an opinion. I think company X should be worth this because its earnings are gonna grow for this much, and I think it's worth paying this much for that earnings and that growth. That's sort of the idea. That's what we're arguing about. To use another cliche, that's what makes a market, different views on what the value should be. But the price is not the same as the value. Over the long term, again, it should weigh out to the same thing, but in the short term, it'll fluctuate in that voting. And so the two cliches that are worth keeping in mind here, Warren Buffett will say, price is what you pay, value is what you get. And the other way is to think we vote on price and we weigh on value over time. Another common misconception that I want to flag for now, share price does not necessarily mean anything on its own. Whether somebody has a different share price than another doesn't mean anything. Here's a pop quiz for you. I promise no real math. Which of these companies is worth the most? So even though Google has the lowest share price, it's worth the most. It is worth $1.6 trillion in market capitalization, whereas Costco has a market capitalization of $225 billion, and Caterpillar has a market capitalization of $109 billion. Enterprise values will fluctuate a little bit, but they'll still be in that ranking. So Google, even though it has the lowest share price, is the worth the most. Now here's a trickier question. Which of these companies is the most expensive? You can't answer that yet. 
We don't have that information. We could say which is worth the most, which is the most expensive on a certain basis, like price to earnings or other measurements, but even that won't really answer which is most expensive. We might argue that one business should be more expensive than another because it's a better business. We get into all these subjective things. The only thing I want to say now is if somebody says something is cheap or expensive, look closely, figure out what basis they mean when they say that. Why is this cheap? Why is this expensive? And if they're just saying it's because of the share price, get out of the room. Go talk to somebody else because they're not worth your time. Why would I buy a specific stock then? Well, let's go back to what I was talking about earlier, the idea of voting versus weighing. When I buy a stock, I'm buying in my style investing because I think that the price that the market is voting on is not as good as the value that it will weigh in the future. I think that there's a disconnect between the price and the value. I think the stock should weigh more over time for whatever reason, and that's what I'm buying for. Another way I sort of think about my investments is that I will often either buy companies that are actually making quite a good bit of money on a per share basis compared to the price of the stock, but the market thinks that will go away, and I don't, or I buy companies where they're not making a great amount of money, and I think they'll grow more than the market expects they will. Or they're making a good amount of money, but they'll continue to make more, and the market isn't quite expecting that. Embedded in all of that, I have to have a thesis or a reason to believe that something is going to happen that's not in the current price, so that the price does not line up with the value. That's on the underlying thesis there. So I am trying to find a variant view or an edge compared to the rest of the market. I don't obsess about this. It's hard to know why everybody thinks the way they think, but I have to have a theory for why I think the shares will go higher that hasn't been expressed in the current price or in the current discourse. That's what I'm trying to do when I buy a stock. I've mentioned earlier that what's great about the stock market is that you're always getting feedback on whether your thesis is right or not. Let's go back to Progressive. I bought it in 2019 after reading an article and doing some research and deciding that Progressive was a really good company that was trading for a relatively cheap price compared to how much money it made. This was at the end of 2019, and in the three and a half years since, it has done better than the S&P 500. Great, right? I'm a genius. No, not necessarily. All that means for now is that the stock market is agreeing with me. I would have to break out whether its earnings have been as solid as I would have expected. There were a bunch of weird things like a pandemic, which actually was really beneficial for auto insurance companies because not a lot of people were driving. It's too hard to say whether I was right or not, but it's working. It's playing out well. All of this is a discussion for another time. I just wanted to flag that as an example of a thesis and how it might play out. The big things I want you to take away from this video is that a stock is a piece of the business and that when you own shares, you own a piece of the business. You don't just own a piece of paper or a line of digital keep note keeping. Over the long term, the price of a stock, which is different than its value, those two things will tend to correlate over time. But in the short term, sentiment and voting will create opportunities where the price does not equal the value. And that's where we're interested as investors in taking advantage of that. In the next video, I'll talk about what type of investor you might be and how to think through that and how to know thyself. And then we'll talk more about how to find stocks, how to determine what they do, how to understand them, and then how to actually buy them. So follow this channel, subscribe to this to get more of a short investing guide. Look up shortinvestingguide.com. Leave me any comments or get in touch in any way you can. And thank you. Stay tuned for the next one. Mm -hmm.